Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming along. My name is Charlotte Graham Cumming, and I'm a director at Ice Blue Sky. And we are what's known in marketing terms as inbound marketing specialists. But essentially what we do is we help companies, particularly technology companies, including print, um, create effective marketing. So marketing strategies is, is one of the things that uh, we help companies put together. And that's what I'm here for today, is to give you a whistle-stop tour through a practical way to put together a marketing plan that is going to work for your business. So um, if any of you were here for Graham's presentation a short while ago, he shared some great ideas about how once you know who your audience are, you can create some really effective marketing that gives you what you need. And this is about practical advice for marketing. So most people, when they bump into me and they say, oh, what do you do? Particularly from the print sector, and I say, oh, I'm in marketing. And I'm sure this is the picture that springs to most of their minds. Oh, isn't marketing cute and fluffy and lovely and, and all very pretty? Um, which, you know, it can be. But actually, marketing is really important to a business, incredibly important, because what it does is it creates that first impression of the customer about the value that you add to them as an organization. So if you're sitting around waiting for customers to come to you, or you're blasting out loads of emails, or you're attending lots of trade shows, um, but you're really not getting enough customers coming into you voluntarily, then marketing should be really important to your business. Another comment I hear is, oh, I don't need marketing, all my business is by referral. Well, it would be if you're not doing any marketing. And that's actually quite a lot of hard work, keeping that referral process going. Imagine if you could balance out that referral just by adding another 10% of inquiries into your business. 20%, 50%, which are some of the results that we see with customers. If your business is all about referral, then you're clearly not doing enough marketing or you're not doing the right kind of marketing. This I hear from printers all the time. It's all about price. Marketing makes no difference to that. Well, I've got some examples of why that's not exactly true. Price is always important, but it's not always the deciding factor. Why do people spend 500 euros on an Apple phone versus 200 euros for a Samsung phone? The difference is brand, marketing. Are you bored with your business? I run a business, I'm one of the directors, as I said, of Ice Blue Sky, so I know what it's like. If you're bored with your business, chances are you're not working with the right kind of customers, delivering the right kind of services that really light your fire and remind you why you went into business in the first place. Are you frustrated with people not, buying on, um, not paying on time, for example, or delivering non-profitable projects? If you're experiencing any of these things, chances are your marketing is not making the promise that your business wants to deliver to your customers. So these are all objections that I encounter a lot when we work with the print sector. As I said, all about price. Marketing doesn't work. I tried marketing once. Doesn't work. Not doing that again. Print is different from other industries. Again, referral. All about referral. Customers don't care about print. And actually, while those, some of those things are perhaps relevant and influential factors, they're not all completely biblically true. It will be all about price if customers aren't understanding the value that you're adding. If you do marketing over time, regularly, consistently, and properly, it will work. It will deliver. It's not a black art. Marketing, it seems like a black art. It seems mysterious, but it actually isn't. And that's one of the things I'm going to take you through today as practical ways to create that effective marketing. And customers do care about print, but it's up to us to show them why they have to care about print. They don't care about print in the sense of, oh, isn't it lovely? Doesn't it feel nice? They care about what print can deliver for their business in conjunction with the other marketing things that they're trying to deliver. And if you care about print, and if, if print is very important to you, it's up to you to demonstrate the difference that that makes to the customer. It's not up to the customer to try and wade through all the information to try and gain that understanding. So the first step in really understanding who you are as a business and what value you add to customers is understanding why you're in business. 
So I don't know if any of you have ever heard of this chap here, Simon Sinek. Um, he's an American and he wrote a book called Start With Why. And I would highly recommend that you read the book as a first step or watch the video on YouTube because he also did a TED talk, which is like a summary of the book. Most companies start their marketing this way. So they talk about what they do, they talk about how they do it, a very tiny, tiny percentage of companies talk about why they do it. So what difference does that make? Thinking about another sector different to print services, consumer electronics. If you're in consumer electronics and you're talking about what you do, chances are somebody says to you, what do you do? Oh, I'm in consumer electronics. If you answer that way, you might be Dell. Very solid, nothing wrong with Dell as a brand, but it's very much what it says on the tin. We know that Dell sells laptops, Dell sells IT equipment, Dell sells to corporates. Whereas if you think about, if you think about why you do something, why are you in business, why are you there in the first place, what gets you up in the morning, you might think, you might say this, we think different, we want to change the world, and it's gonna be no surprise to anybody what brand that is. And the reason people keep banging on about Apple is because Apple do it right. Because that's why they're able to command those big prices and why they have such loyalty. Because when you go back to the why, why you're in business, that is when you can create a connection with people across a set of beliefs as opposed to just a service that's being provided, a commodity. So if you think about when you meet people in real life, you meet people, you have a conversation, you might pick up on two or three things that you have in common with them, and you might have a set of values, core values, that become apparent as you're talking. So if you do find those common touch points, you're more likely to carry on a conversation. Now I'm talking socially as well as professionally, but you are gonna have more of a connection. And this is what marketing, and, your, and part of that is your brand, should be delivering to your audience is communicating your values, your set of core beliefs that you operate with as a business. Because that is a much more intangible and stronger connection than just going down the commodity path of this is what we do. So bringing this back to the print industry is, so when someone says to you, what do you do? Well, we provide print products and services. But actually, what if you step back and think about the why? Think about why you started the business in the first place. Is it about these things? And so start to ask yourself as a business, I started this business because, and maybe it could be some of these points. Is it about helping customers communicate better with their customers? Is it about encouraging creativity? There's probably a reason why your business has more relevance and value than your competitors, and it's really important to start here. And what's important to remember too about this getting this process right is making money, making profit, is a result. It is not a reason. It's not a reason to be, because a customer is not gonna connect with you on this. They're more likely to connect with you about these points here. So once you've thought about what your why, you need to think about how you then go and put that into action. And all of these things that we're constantly being told that we need to do as businesses, we need to add better value to our customers. So practically, how can you get going on that road that will take you down that journey? So there are three aspects to getting marketing right. The first one, inspire versus manipulate. Manipulate in marketing terms is not necessarily a horrible thing. Essentially, manipulation are things like buy one, get one free, 20% off, purchase by the end of the quarter, and I'll give you some money off, all of those things. So those are called manipulations. Whereas if your marketing focuses on inspiring your audience, you don't need to resort to the manipulative marketing tactics because people are buying from you because they believe in what you do and they see the value in what you do. The other key to good marketing is strategy versus tactical. Now, tactical is important. Sometimes you've just got to 
make some profit in a quarter or in a month and you've got to, you've got to raise your business, which is fine. But having an overall marketing strategy, a reason, a long-term goal, which could be 12 months, 24 months, five years, getting that strategic advantage in place and being able to understand how you're going to communicate that um, to your audience is really important. And if you get both of those two things right, you then get down to the third one, which is creating customer loyalty, not just repeat business. So repeat business is where people get into the habit of buying from you. It's easy to deal with. They know where you are. But if you're just relying on repeat business as opposed to loyalty, you're much more exposed in terms of your relationship with that customer because someone can come along with a cheaper price and that may sway your end customer. Whereas if you're basing your proposition on creating a loyalty with that customer, making them stick to you as an organization by adding as much value as you can consistently over time, that relationship is much more rock solid um, and less likely to be cannibalized by your competitors. So, putting all that into practice, where do you start? Well, the most important thing is to talk to your customers. So, it's not, that's probably not news, I'm sure you've heard lots of people talk about that, but how do you talk to your customers? What questions do you need to ask them? So, before you get to the questions, you need to get to what your objectives are. You want to get close to your customers. You want them to talk to you in a way that they're probably not used to talking to you. So that means you've got to go in armed with a, with a distinct set of questions, not just going for a chat over coffee and just saying, well, what's going on in your life? What are your pains? What are your challenges? It's actually you need to understand what motivates your customers and then what their perceptions are of you as a business, but also of your sector. Because once you understand all of those different things, you can then create a proposition that aims to help them overcome those challenges, but also to maybe change some of their perceptions. So the big thing a lot of companies do is they make lots of assumptions about what their customers are thinking. So one of the things we do is we take customers through, okay, go and ask your customers these types of questions. So these types of questions need to be around, how do I, how does your customer, how does your buyer think and behave? So what do they think about the problem that you can solve for them? So first of all, you need to understand what problem do they think you solve for them? So this comes down to, if any of you were here for Graham's presentation earlier, he was talking about solution selling, they might just think you provide print. Whereas actually you could help them drive lead generation. You could help them manage their brand much more effectively. So you start to think about what are those perceptions that those buyers have? How do they view the problem that you can solve for them? How important do they think that problem is to them? Because while you may think that problem is really important, they may not. So this may help you uncover some other um, problems that they have that they think are more important and more effective. What do they think about providers? Do they have a perception about about you as suppliers and about your competition? Do they have perceptions about the value that you can add, the pricing, the way that you sell things, the way that you are as businesses, the value that you add to them in their day-to-day -day lives? What values do they find important? So this is where I was talking about identifying those belief systems. Buyers will, I mean, we've all heard the phrase, people buy from people. How, Combining that set of values is really important because the buyer, in order for you to get to that position where you're adding more value, needs to feel that you are a good fit for their organization, that you fit in culturally. So it's really important to understand what that culture is. What options does the buyer believe that they have to solve that particular problem? If you're going in there and you think, actually, by using things like augmented reality, variable data print, I know I can increase their campaign responses. How important is that to the person that you're talking to? If you're talking to the director of marketing, probably very important. But if you're talking to a print buyer that might be quite isolated from the marketing team, which does happen in larger organizations, then that, might not, that may not be as important as price. 
So then that may lead you to think, well, actually, my route to the print buyer shouldn't be direct. It should be through the marketing director. So that's why this type of information is really crucial to understand, because it can help you see, am I targeting the right people with the right message at the right time? So continuing around buyer perceptions, you can think about what you can go very granular um, across all of these different areas. So in business to business, which is where, where we specialize and obviously where the print supplier typically sits, the type of marketing that you do is very important and, under, and so is the ability to understand how to link that to the different buying stages that happen in B2B. So the first stage is quite an emotional decision. So I go out there, I'm, I'm looking for a solution and I'm pulling together a long list. I want to know what's out there. So that's when quite quirky content can get people's attention. So I might see something that's shared by one of my peers or I might see something shared on YouTube or Facebook or, or Twitter or, or even on the TV. I'm going to ask the people that I know for recommendations. So content and marketing activity that's aimed at this stage of the buying cycle should really be aimed at getting people's attention, getting a very single clear message across straight away. The next stage, which is where the shortlist is prepared, is much more logical. And this is much more where you get into the tick box um, functionality of a decision-making process. Can they do what I want them to do? Are they the type of organization that I can work with? What can they deliver? Now, the third stage, which is the actual decision, which most people tend to think is a logical stage, is not. It's actually emotional. Because if you've done the shortlist properly, then this choice then comes down to, how do I feel about this organization that I'm working with? How do I feel that this organization is going to make me look good in my job, which is the core motivation for a B2B buyer? So again, the marketing that you do here and up to this point should absolutely facilitate what you want them to feel at this point about you as an organization. And that's why it's really important. And then obviously the fourth stage, which is the actual project, is logical. Let's get the job done. So the idea of pointing this out is when you're putting together your marketing strategy and your marketing activity, is think about how each activity fits into these stages and how it supports these stages. Because if it doesn't support these questions, it's probably not going to deliver what you need. And if it's not delivered at the right time to the buyer, it's probably not going to deliver what you need. So how does that relate to what we typically see as marketing outputs? So as I said earlier, most companies do it this way. They start by telling you what they do. Then they tell you how they do it. And most never even get to this point at all. And this is coming back to that golden circle, the, the power of why. So if you're doing effective marketing, this is what people come in and see first, that single-minded proposition, that why you exist as a business in the first place, what it, what it is you offer to that customer. So that's why it's really important that you start with that exercise of the golden circle, understanding why you do what you do. Because are you there to help them be more creative as a business? Are you there to help them grow their business? These are all value-add propositions. Then you can get into the how, which is more targeted messaging, um, divided up maybe by industry sector, could be divided up by job title, but getting very targeted in how you talk to people and what content you expose to them and how you explain this value here. So for example, if you deal with B2B and B2C, this is where you would split up that message. If you deal with manufacturers and retailers, this is where you would split up that message. If you deal with the print buyer versus the marketing versus facilities, this is where you would split up that message. And then you can see here, you then get into the, the what. The what do you do? 
And that is the beginning of the sales conversation because actually you don't want the customers making the decision on what technology you need to sell them or what service you need to provide because that's not the customer's expertise. The customer's expertise is knowing what problems they have. Sales should really be doing the job of deciding what the customer wants or what will fix the customer pain. So these are the approximate four stages of the path that the customer goes down in terms of their exposure to your brand. And again, it's important that you align your marketing activity and content to these stages. So you, the customer needs to know that you exist. So that's typically, you've probably heard marketeers talk about awareness. This is all that activity. This is where social media comes in. This is where trade shows like this come in. This is where presentations like this come in. People need to know that you exist as a business. Then the next level down for that is what we typically call interest. They need to know what you do. They need to know what you stand for. They need to understand how relevant you are to them. Now this third stage is where we start to prepare for the sales cycle. Because marketing is distinct from sales, but it should always be the beginning of the sales cycle. So marketing's job is to bring people in, make them aware of you as a business, make them aware of the value that you add, and keep people warm until they get to that third stage, which is, I'm ready for what you do. So that's why it's important to do marketing consistently over time, because people need to know when they're ready that you will be there. So just because they're ready for what you do, they've then got to make the decision actually, do I believe that you are the right partner for the job? So that's the fourth stage of this selection process, which is creating a connection and getting them to understand why you are the right supplier for the job as opposed to someone else. And that selection, typically, if your marketing is doing its job, if your sales is doing its job, price will be a small part of that decision. So, Thinking long-term, as I said, with marketing is really crucial. Integrated marketing, I'm sure, is a term you're probably familiar with, although mostly in the print industry it's called cross-media. But it's not just doing one thing, one big thing once. If you've only got a small marketing budget, then displaying at a trade show that takes up 80% of that budget may not necessarily be the best idea. It may well be. But again, it's about putting your plan together, understanding what, what revenue am I generating from all the marketing activity I'm doing? What's the most effective piece of activity that I've done to date? How can I replicate that? How can I scale that? Marketing is all about focus. Our customers know that focus is one of my favorite words because when you sell, yeah, you can sell pretty much whatever you want to whoever you want. Someone comes and says to you, right, I need this, and I need it by this day, and I need that, and you think, yeah, it's not my core business, but I'll make a little bit of profit on it, so yeah, I'll do it, fine. And, and you, can, you can do that all day long. But with marketing, you have to focus, and you have to start with a specific audience, with a specific message, with a specific value proposition. Because otherwise, marketing doesn't work when you try to be everything to everybody. And you will be far more effective with marketing if you start off with a specific audience and a specific message, you test it, you get it right, then you can roll it out across your different audiences. But absolutely focus. The fourth point is making marketing accountable, which it can be. You know, this is one of the things that I'm always <laughs> banging on to our customers about. Marketing is not a dark art. It's not exactly a science but it's not a dark art. It can be held accountable, it can be measured. So the way that we measure marketing and we, whether we know marketing is working is we use these four categories here, which is called the AIDA model. And we measure how people move through these different stages. And this is how you can tell whether or not your marketing is effective. So when we engage with a customer and we know they're aware of us, so we, let's say we met them at a trade show, they opened an email that we sent them, they've maybe liked something on social media. So we know that that person has affirmed that they are aware of you as an organization. 
Now that level of activity and interaction has a shelf life, which is typically 30 days. So if they bump into you and they're aware of you in one of those mechanisms, after about 30 days, if there's no more touch points, they're probably going to forget all about you. So what's really important is to measure the progress from here to here. So this is where they've actively engaged with you. So let's say they've downloaded something from your website. They've downloaded a report that you've written. They've downloaded a case study. They've actually um, had made a comment on social media and you've interacted with them that way. So they've actually actively made an effort to spend some time engaging with your brand. So if your conversion from here to here is fairly solid, and that can vary from 15 to 30% is about right, then you know you're doing something right. If this is really low, then you know that there's something wrong with the content that you're putting out there because people aren't responding to it. They're looking at it, but they're not engaging with it. Then if you move from interest to desire, this is where they actively start to say to you, I'd like to have a conversation. So maybe they register to, uh, for an event that you're running. Or maybe they say, yeah, I'd like to meet one of your sales guys. But it's actually all they have a telephone conversation and they say, yeah, I'd like to come and talk to you more. But it's about where they're actively demonstrating that they want to talk to you about a specific need. And this is where we get into, do they have a budget? Do they have the right authority? All of those things. And again, making sure the conversion here is going to be lower than it is here, but making sure that it's at a decent enough percentage so you know that what you're, what you're doing to pique people's interest initially is actually following through to the promise that you make as a business and that you're credible as a business in terms of that particular mode of delivery. And action is when we actually get into a sales cycle. So they, this becomes what we call a sales qualified lead. So sales have met with the person and they've said, yep, it's good to go. It's an opportunity. It's not closed, but it's an opportunity. And again, these conversions are going to be very small. But if you check the consistency of those conversions, that's how you know if your marketing is working. So managing resource of marketing. Now, obviously, we're an agency, so we often get brought in when either companies don't have the right resource, either for the strategic stuff or for the execution, um, because resource can be a big issue with marketing, particularly having the right skill set. So if, you're, if your marketing has always been a bit ad hoc and you want to bring it up to the next level, chances are you're going to need some help. What's really important with effective marketing is ownership. Somebody within the business, and it's no good relying on an external agency because an external agency will never be as close to your business because they don't, they're not working within your business. So somebody senior in the business has to have an ownership and a belief in marketing. And I've, over the years, I've learned this lesson very painfully because as an agency, you do get very keen. You want to go in and you want to help a business owner and then suddenly, about two, two months in, you realize actually that business owner does not believe in marketing at all. He's just ticking a box that says, oh, I must do marketing. Doesn't want to understand it, doesn't believe in it, expects an agency to wave a magic wand and, and deliver all the results that he wants, or she. So it's an important qualification if you go down this route that you have to own it and you have to understand it. You have to think about the talent gaps that you've got within your business and how that might impact on an effective marketing program. So a talent gap doesn't always necessarily mean that people don't know. It might be that they just don't have time to do it. So you might have um, someone a bit younger who's really nifty on social media, but maybe that has absolutely nothing to do with their day job. And if they start focusing on that, then that's going to cause you problems in delivery and operations, for example. So when you're putting your plan together, as well as thinking about your activity, think about your resource. So a good way if you're starting this process is to base your plan around the resources that you have to start off with, and then you flip it on, your, on its head as you go by. So you get in the resources that you need to deliver the plan effectively. One of the other really common questions I get asked a lot is, well, how do I, what is the right budget 
for marketing? How much do I, how much is the right budget for what I'm trying to achieve? Um, and there are, there is an actual way of doing this effectively when you first start this process and, and you can, you can refine this as you go through this process. But they're essentially the five levers for working out a marketing budget, as you can see. So desired result, how many leads do you want to generate? How big is your audience? Um, how difficult is your audience to, to reach? How many deals um, do you need to achieve in a year and at what average sale price? So these are all the different levers of working out your budget. How many leads do you need to create in order to achieve those number of deals? What's your typical conversion rate from when you get a lead in? Do you need to grade those leads? What do you call a lead? And therefore, what database size do you need to have? And how is your marketing activity going to reach that database size? So this is just a simple example um, in terms of working that out. So the top line here is, OK, let's say we need 200,000 um, in terms of revenue from new business. This is what we're looking for sales and marketing to achieve in the upcoming year. Our average sale price is 20,500. So therefore, we need around 34 deals in order to make that overall target up there. So in order to make 34 deals in this company, there's a roughly a four to one ratio of leads to deals. So that means for every lead they get, um, it needs four to close one deal. Now this ratio depends on how you determine how you qualify a lead. So a lead could be, oh, I met them at a trade show. And in that case, that number would probably shoot up to 10, 15 to 1. But in this case, they defined a lead as, OK, I know they've got a budget. They are the decision maker. And they've got a very specific need. And they've got a very specific timeline associated to that need. So that is quite a strong definition of a lead, which is why their ratio is 4 to 1. So in order to um, achieve that number of leads, this is roughly the database side that we, size that we need. Then this is a question for the stakeholders in the business. How much do you think you can stomach as a business to acquire a customer? So this particular business decided that their cost per lead, and again, their lead definition was very, very structured. That's how much they were willing to pay. Now for big enterprise solutions, um, for example, we do work with IBM at the other end of the scale, their cost per lead is three and a half thousand pounds. So it's a much different scale. But that's for solutions that cost $5 million. So you, know, you need to think about, OK, what should your cost of sale be, cost per lead? So then doing a rough calculation, this is how much they knew they needed to spend on marketing in, in order to generate the leads that they wanted. So this is quite a good way of structuring that initial, initial budget requirement. So I've whizzed through this. Normally, when we do this with a customer, it takes us about two to three months. <laughs> so it's a lot of information to absorb. And actually, you know, if you want the slides, you can contact me afterwards, and I'm, I'm happy to send them to you. But going back to those questions that we asked at the beginning, hopefully, we've started to address some of these points. So in print, it's all about price. Well, it will be if, they don't, if you don't do that work of getting to know your customers and really understanding what makes them tick and where they see the value in what you do, it will continue to be about price. Making marketing work is about doing it consistently, targeting it to the right audience, and making sure your content is aligned to the way that that audience buys. Print is different from other industries. No, it isn't really. I've never met a business yet that we can't improve the marketing on. So I don't believe that anymore. My business is all referral. Hopefully, I've already explained that one a few times. And customers don't care about print. Well, they will if you make them care about print and make them understand the value that it provides. So five actions that would be good for you to take away from this. These actions will be good small steps to get you started on putting together an effective marketing plan. And sit down and think about what your why is as a business. Talk to the other stakeholders in your business. 
try and get a common understanding of why you're in business, stepping back from the day to day. Just go and see two or three key customers. I mean, I'm, I'm an agency, I'm, I'm a customer of printers, um, and we use printers regularly, and I probably see them about once every four years. They never phone me and say, I'd really love to come and hear more about your business. And I'm in marketing, I love to talk about what I do. That's what marketeers are like, they love to talk. So take advantage of that, go and see them, go and talk to them. Think about what content you can create that plugs the gap we were talking about, the gap between what the customer's got going on over here and what you've got going on over there. Helping your customers with their data, for example. Helping your customers manage their brand, helping them get more creative in their marketing. Helping them generate more leads and getting closer to their audiences. That's the sort of content that you should be putting out there for people to discover so that they talk to you about value as opposed to about price. And then put in some measurements. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but just start to measure what you're doing. Start to really understand what activity is driving value. And I promise you, if you at least do these five things over the next couple of months, that you'll start to see a difference or at least understand a lot more about how you can connect with your customers. So that's it from me. Um, my contact details are up there, so if you would like a copy of the slides, um, please just let me know. Um, or come and see me in a minute and I'll give you a card and you can send me some stuff. So hopefully um, you'll feel a little bit inspired to put a bit more structure around your marketing. Thank you.